Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Let me, just, you, you don't need to write, just look at me. Let me list for you a few laws that have the power of God behind them. Are you ready? You can just listen. Number one is the law of diligence. The Bible says the diligent hand shall be made rich. No matter who on earth, the moment you subscribe to diligence, there is a great future for you under normal circumstances. If you are diligent and you do not prosper, it takes demons to interrupt that law. But under normal circumstances, diligence should and productivity is connected to wealth and increase. Number two, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. That every time you show mercy, you are programming that reality. Whether you are born again or not, based on the laws of seasons and the laws of time and chance, eventually that harvest will come to you. Herein lies the answer to the age-long question. Why is it that if God is the God of the universe, there are believers who are suffering, there are children who are crying across the globe, how can a loving God be seated upon his throne and is watching children in Africa die, whereas there are people who are renting jets and renting a lot of things and wasting their lives and it looks like God is watching them. Listen to me. God gave every man a will and not even him will violate that will. At the expense of your eternal destiny, he allows you to choose whether you want to hand your life to him or not. And if you reject him, he will respect your decision. Even when Satan rebelled against him in heaven, he respected his decision. Unfortunately, every decision comes with consequences. It was not that God got up and decided to punish Satan. The judgment of Satan was the consequence of rebellion. Are we together? This is very powerful. So when we see people cry and die and scrounge around in our society, is a violation largely. Now, demon spirits have taken advantage of that state, but they are taking advantage of that state because they already know that there is a dimension of the power of God invested in principles. Watch this. So a gentleman gets up one day I'm not talking of someone who is born again. We are believers, but I hope you understand why I'm teaching you this way. So a gentleman who is not even saved just gets up and reads a book. Maybe a book written by Bill Gates or a book written by any great man and makes up his mind that I'm going to take my destiny by my hands. Are we together? Now, this is somebody who is not saved and makes up his mind to walk with the things that are written there. He begins to change his attitude. He begins to subject himself through all kinds of things. He subscribes to mentorship. Are we together? Educate his mind. You will find out that the reality of that man begins to change. Remember our definition of power? The ability to control and to manipulate your outcome. The once poor and wretched gentleman suddenly begins to change. His life is changing. This gentleman has refused to accept the person of Jesus, but he has adopted the principles of Jesus. They may not acknowledge him as the author of those principles, but please, I want you to believe me that if you ever see any manifestation of power, it is because there is a dimension of God's power programmed in laws. Now, people call it all kinds of names. Some call it the laws of the universe. Some call it all kinds of laws. Some attribute it to mother nature, unfortunately. But we who are of the faith, we know. That's why I laid that foundation. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that all power belongs to the Lord. So if I plant corn and I see that corn growing, I don't congratulate the universe for giving me corn. I give glory to Jesus because I know that he's the one who empowered it. But if I'm an unbeliever, I can give that glory to my conscience or some kind of cosmic power. This is the advantage that believers have. When believers practice the laws of the kingdom, the advantage is that we practice it as submitting to Jesus and eventually the glory returns to Jesus. Are you learning now? 
but you neglect laws and principles and you find out that you have neglected a whole dimension of God's power, you may never experience it in your life. Could it be that someone seated now, you are born again, you are saved, but you have ignored obedience to principles and to laws, spiritual laws, laws that have been taught, scriptural laws. There are laws of growth. There are laws of leadership. There are laws of influence. There are laws of multiplication. There are laws of restoration. Which of them do you not know? Which of them do you know? My assignment is by the ministry of the Holy Spirit to expose you to these laws of the kingdom. I call them mysteries. Matthew 13 and 11. Jesus himself was teaching the disciples and he said the kingdom was shrouded in mysteries. He says because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Watch a display of spiritual laws. Moses comes to stand in front of Pharaoh and he throws his rod and that rod becomes a serpent. Look at me. And then Janus and Jembes, they never called the name of Jesus, yet they threw their rod and it became that. Now, I'm not promoting evil. Never will I do so. It is for the purpose of my discussion with you. How many of you know that in our various villages, in our various market squares, and even some have been so sophisticated, there are people who are acclaimed magicians. Am I right on that? And they, they bastardize spiritual laws. You sit down. Sometimes you, you, you almost have to shut yourself from watching those things because they, the things that you seem to be craving to see manifest, they play child play they manipulate the laws of the spirit it only reveals to you the possibilities that are there that are yet to be tapped all power belongs to God so I lay hands on a sick person and says in the name of Jesus stand up from this wheelchair and the person stands up and you are clapping yet another person is in a village somewhere telling someone look I, I cannot stand up and they say don't worry we'll put a particular leaf we'll chant something and then the person gets up now two of us seem to have done the same thing the difference is that Jesus is glorified in one and Satan is glorified in the other are you getting what I'm saying now the believer, listen to me, there are many, many formulas and there are many routes to accessing power. But the believer, for you to be a believer indeed, you must be constrained to only the method that scripture provides. That does not mean there are no other routes. But the believer has a mandate. Please get this. Are we together now? The difference between witchcraft and satanism and spiritism is that you are walking out of the confines of the provisions that scripture allows. The believer is not just interested in outcomes. You are interested in making sure that what you practice is in keeping with the principles that are revealed in scripture. Failure to know this is what has led many people into extra biblical practices and into all kinds of satanic things because when you now know that after all every law is God's law so let me manipulate it I can go and kill a goat and spill the blood after all the concept of blood was introduced by God himself not even Satan I can now manipulate you but when you know that as a believer part of what makes you a believer is your total submission to the authority of scripture your total submission to the ways of God so if you advertise a strategy for me, even if it is producing results and is inconsistent with scripture, my being a believer mandates that I reject it. Are we together? Is someone learning now? If, you, if you're understanding me, say amen. amen. Hmm. Why will I not just go and call some herbalist somewhere and say we're all co-laborers, we're colleagues in this business. The most important thing is we're getting people healed. Why will I not do that? Because the results may seem to have a similitude. It may look like there's result, but our convictions, the government that we pledge our authority to, are we together? And the modus operandi, the pathway we follow are very different. I will not hate them, but I'm not going to fraternize with them because I do not believe that. Why should Paul in Acts chapter 16 
cast a demon out of a damn cell who was using it to prophesy to people. If he was just about the prophetic, he rebuked her because in doing that, Satan was manipulating that thing. Are we together now? And he was using it to deceive many people and to bring gains to many people. If someone is learning, say amen. amen. So, the first level at which the power of God is accessed is the power programmed into laws and principles. Please hear me. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you? Do you know why laws are very predictable? Watch this. Some of you, especially our international guests, you took a flight from your various nations to come here. Most likely the person who flew you was not a believer. Yet that whole aircraft and the system worked in keeping with the law of aerodynamics. The law of aerodynamics is not a scientific law. It is a spiritual law that was discovered and used by science. Are we together now? What you call scientific laws, go and ask the inventors of those laws. Is it the laws of mechanics? Is it the law of whatever it is? Everything you call a law today, we just say they are spiritual laws and natural laws simply because of the dimensions where they find expression. But in truth, there are only spiritual laws. All laws are spiritual because they have the power of God back in them. Are we together? So, men like Sir Isaac Newton, in their study of mechanics, they, start, they stumbled across several laws and put their postulations together. Are we together? There were many other scientists, Michael Faraday, look at this. Today we are enjoying and preaching the gospel because of a concept called electricity. The Wright brothers, are we together now? Henry Ford, all of these people, the inventions in our world today are simply spiritual laws that have been tapped and have been converted into a way and a strategy that betters the life of people. That means even when no plane had flown in the air, the law of aerodynamics was still there. Only God knows how many other laws are there that we are yet to find. Once upon a time, listen, many of you remember, once upon a time, if you went to the bank, you could not transfer money from your branch to another branch. No. Not to talk of whoever believed that you can hold a phone and with your phone you can do transactions you can talk to anybody across the world. Remember those days when rain falls and your nightel line cuts. You have to carry a ladder and start strolling around your community looking for which one a tree has fallen on now. To fix it so that your phone will come back. But right now with one dial, with one dial you can be talking to someone from anywhere across the globe. Those laws were always there. Just because we did not know them. The power of God remained dormant on that wise. Today we talk of AI and all these technological things. Look at how excited we are entering into it. Yet they have always been there. Please listen to me. If you understand what I'm telling you, your life will become phenomenal. You will now respect the laws of God. This organization will always lead to depletion. It's a law. Even if it is practiced by a Christian, the moment you are disorganized in leadership, in ministry, as a person, there will never be growth with disorganization. Scatter your clothes and try to put it in a bag. You find out that it seems like it cannot enter. Iron them and arrange the same clothes. You will now be able to close the bag. Disorganization will always lead to depletion. It's a law. Now, watch this. Why am I teaching you this? So that in wanting to see the power of God made manifest in your life, you will see that God was so determined that he invested his power in laws and principles. Wealth has a law. Kingdom wealth does not just work on laws alone. When you now bring kingdom, it is not only laws now. You have to bring in the will of God and the purposes of God. That's why there is a difference between wealth and kingdom wealth. There is a difference between influence and kingdom influence. Influence, you just need to work on the law of growth, result, productivity, leadership. But when you bring kingdom to it, you now have to submit to the will of God. Are we learning now? Look at the advancements we're making in medicine. 
Watch this. I hope you know that the same malaria that today, if someone said, I have fever or malaria, they say, oh, sorry. Just stroll to a pharmacist there, talk with the pharmacist, and they will give you some drug. Nobody will lament. In fact, many people will not even pray. They'll just say it's well. But the same malaria once upon a time on earth here, if you had it, it was as though you had HIV. Am I right? It was as though you had cancer. Yet, there were laws that had these solutions. One day, scientists together stumbled across a combination that could sort out malaria so easily. Now, someone can even be doing his work and say, you know, I've had malaria. And you say, sorry. And you expect to see that person by next week. The power of laws. That means cancer that is killing people today. Listen carefully. That means <laughs> HIV that is killing people today. There is a supernatural dimension to it. But please, I want you to believe me that God who put his power in laws, there is every solution. It is the, this is where the assignment of the Holy Ghost comes. You will be learning how inventions happen. Invention is not brain work. Invention is a spirit assisting a man to find where these laws are alongside the combination. Go and ask inventors. They will tell you inventors are usually lonely people they alienate themselves from society it is that level of consecration that introduces them to spirits they may not acknowledge that i'm interacting with a spirit they will say a voice told me join this join that join this and boom something happens there were people from as far back as 1992 1993 who predicted the technological advancement of these days not by word of knowledge the progression of inventions and that happened by the assistance of spirits we are still coming to the other dimensions I am just telling you that watch this we are immersed in a myriad of spiritual laws waiting for us to understand the Bible is the believers compendium of these laws that if you find out from this Bible, whoever knew that if someone is sick, you can play worship and play all of this and it can bless the person and it can be healed. Now medical science is telling us that even people who submit themselves to these atmospheres and these energies, that they have a, 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 a chance of recovery than those who are allowed to be lonely and just sit back there. But this, right from the beginning, these things were in the Bible. Now, hear me. I know that people have used satanic and demonic laws to destroy. My goal is to help you know that these laws work because it is the power of God that is behind them. Forever until Jesus comes, when you get an airplane and the laws of aerodynamics is working well, when you move that plane, are we together now? It is going to go upon the air and we are going to travel and keep traveling, taking the gospel and taking whatever it is on the strength of that law. Many people have come here today. Look at your phone. Once upon a time, do you remember something called Nokia 3310? <laughs> remember how proud you were the day you bought it? You flaunted it, the same thing you are hiding today. When you are sorting your clothes and you find it, you quickly destroy You don't want to identify with it. Just, I'm just giving an example. But you can imagine that once upon a time, that was your pride. It would have been a dream to imagine that you can sit down and be watching Koinonia from your phone. Some of you, there are children who do not even know what a cafe is. How about typewriters? Semicolon LKJ, you were taught. And some of you got zero because you couldn't understand it. Where will I put my fingers? Hmm. Are we together? Yet, the laws that can make the globe to be at the, at the hand of a man, it's like this, just here. Today you can do any kind of thing. Unimaginable things. The laws. Believers, please hear me. Before Jesus returns, let me tell you, 
one of the things that the Spirit of God is doing is he's opening the eyes of believers to see other laws, combinations that will provide solutions to men. I'm not just talking of supernatural solutions to the church because there are dimensions of supernatural solutions that the world will not receive. So God brings it down through laws. If I pluck a leaf now and I say eat it, you call me a herbalist. But if I consult with a pharmacist and turn that leaf into a pill and I say swallow it and cancer disappears, you will call that an invention and you are right. Let me tell you there are many leaves that are for the healing of the nations, you see. Some of our, some of our aged parents in almost every village I know in Africa, there's usually one old man who was trained to combine some leaves, you just come and say, my head is paining. He said, just relax. He will stroll around as if he's looking for something that is missing and bring all kinds of things, pound them and say, oh yeah, you eat it. And to your shock, now, it was demonic spirits that taught them. But I'm teaching you that those laws, demonic spirits do not invent power. They only because they know that men unassisted are ignorant they will come to you and claim that they want to give you power your their own court from the deal is your loyalty to them then they will now show you certain spiritual combinations this is how witchcraft happens witchcraft is a manipulation of god's power that comes through a necessary alliance with satan intended to ultimately give you a semblance of result while corrupting your desire for God. But make no mistakes about it. If your plane still flies, if you still switch on your phone, can you imagine that you send a text and it does not make a mistake to enter another number? Eight billion people there about on earth, yet the person you are sending to, it gets to his phone in a moment. I'm holding right here a mic. When I watch the videos of um, Catherine Kuhlman and all these people, when this kind of invention was in its infancy, you see them hanging, they, they, they hang all kinds of things like a growth around their waist and carry it. I mean, you can imagine hanging something this heavy. Yet to them, they were impressed because it was an invention. And today, to many people, I'm even living in a stone age holding this. Are we together? My question for you is what else is there? It would be foolishness to imagine that we have exhausted the laws that are there. What else is there? That someone can come up with something called YouTube. And in a moment, you can broadcast a meeting like this to the ends of the earth. And everybody is connecting. Once upon a time, if you did not have television, you will cry. You will save. Now your TV for some of you has been off for a long time. Because another kind of TV was given to you. What if you are given another that you do not have to hold again? Are you saying it will not happen? Number two. Some of you are already afraid. <laughs> Jesus. The power that is in the name of Jesus is not just for destruction of the camp of the enemy alone. Are we together? There are witty inventions, combinations. Doctors hear me, medical people hear me. There are laws that are waiting for you. And very soon I believe, some believer somewhere will have his eyes open to see what we need to combine to kill cancer permanently. All of these demonic things that keep staring us at the face. We watch our loved ones carrying all kinds of things. Satanic things that keep plaguing them. From a medical standpoint, I'm telling you there are many laws that will be coming by the Spirit of God that will come up with supernatural solutions 
solutions that end on timely death solutions that bring that a day will come someone will say I'm feeling a trace of cancer and it will be like malaria go and take this and it's over say amen no. from a medical standpoint and with all due respect to them there are certain diseases and certain organs in the human body that if and when it begins to deteriorate they tell you that there is no way for recovery they only manage it i respect medicine with all my heart but from the authority of scripture i can tell you the wisdom of god is bigger than that god will never design a system recovery and restoration is a part of the nature of god as far as he's dealing with men is concerned and i'm sure that sooner or later one spirit-filled scientist is going to debunk certain things and say we have found a way to reverse liver problems we have found a way to reverse kidney problems we have found a way to reverse stage four cancer shout amen if you believe that number two the second dimension of the power of God is the power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Please write it down. The power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. This is the highest dimension of power that any person in this side of God's kingdom can access. The power that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Please look at me. As powerful as laws and principles are, in themselves, they do not capture the complete power of God. There are dimensions of God's power that does not come just through understanding of laws. You will need to have an actual relationship with the Lord and you will need to pursue intimacy with God. That dimension of power is the reward that you get for intimacy with God. That is the dimension where supernatural power resides. The power to do impossible things supernaturally. So I can give somebody by the operation of laws, Panadol and whatever it is, and the person can recover. But then the person can come and with one word, I can say in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you seeing now? All power, but different dimensions of power. And the person is healed. Someone can follow the normal laws of wealth, respectfully so, and he's building gradually, but I can come and speak prophetically over him and say by this time tomorrow and program a climate of favor and someone just says, do you know what? I'm giving you 100 million. Now look at that kind of thing. I have superimposed, I have brought another dimension of power. Listen, let me tell you the truth. The power that comes through intimacy is, is, a, is marvelous in his operation. Because this one is not what you receive with your hands. This one is a heart connection. This is your, your, your pressing into God. I love you for who you are. Your growth in the spirit, growth through the word, growth in the place of prayer. Are we together? Your passionate pursuit of God. Show me a man that loves God sincerely. Show me a man devoted and dedicated who will open up his heart to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I show you a man who is about to stumble across genuine supernatural power. Drugs. There is no drug we know today that can raise the dead. It can only help those who are alive. Even medical science will tell you. Are we together? Once someone is confirmed clinically dead, and after a while it is true that the person is dead completely, even the doctors, even the consultants, and we celebrate them and appreciate them greatly for their contributions, but they will stand in honest admission that we have done our best. This person has gone. Yet, ah, there is an ability. The Bible tells us, that when it has to do with that dimension of power, even death is not the end. Now, we may not have entered into the fullness of that experience yet, but we must admit that it is a possibility because the Bible says it. And Jesus showed it. He died. Jesus died. Jesus ate bread, oh. Jesus ate fish, but bread and fish could not bring him back. But if that same spirit 
that raised Christ from the dead. Listen, I know that as it is now, we have not mastered raising the dead. We lose loved ones here and there. But can I tell you, in the midst of your pain, settle it that there is still a dimension of God's power. And I assure you, before Jesus returns, there will be men who will embody these dimensions. There are men who are pressing into God sincerely. We may be crawling like babies, but we are still moving. Deeper levels of intimacy, deeper levels in prayer, deeper levels with the word. And from one level to the other, we are stepping into the prophetic. We are stepping into dimensions. Someday, all it takes is one man, one man to dive into that river. Dive into that river of power. Listen, let me tell you how the economy of God works. He does not take a crowd into new experiences. Usually, it's just one person one person who will push and say lord i will not rest one person the prophetic is wonderful but this is not the end oh god there has to be an ability to raise the dead with the level of mastery you use to heal headache all it takes is for one person now let me tell you there is a side effect if you become that one person you will be persecuted greatly because men as a track record prosecute their saviors but your sustainability will begin to reproduce your kind and sooner or later you will find out go and read about the right brothers if you were alive in their days you would join those insulting them and say go and look for something intelligent to do with your life but they remained go and study on michael faraday go and study on nikola tesla go and study on all these men today we celebrate their inventions but they lived lonely life they were the mockery of society people looked at them like outcasts but there was something within their spirit the same way someone here you cannot describe it but you know the holy ghost has been telling you some of you have seen it in your dreams you have seen it in your vision this cannot be it there is still a higher level of power Thank God for the miracle services. Thank God for falling down and standing up. But we are talking about tapping into the powers of the age to come. Levels of realities that the world has not seen. I don't know about you, but this has been my lifelong pursuit. There are things I've only seen in the spirit. And my desire is that in my lifetime, that we will be able to bring some of these realities here and now. Kai, read your Bible and watch men. Joshua tells the son, stand still. That one is not a law because nobody has replicated it. That one oh, is not a law. How do you look at the son and tell it to stand still? Ah. Moses looks, listen, listen. We brag and say we're in the New Testament, yet we don't come close to what this man did. Listen, I'm telling you, my spirit is fired up right now. A man, an ordinary man, leading 2.5 million people, he stands at the Red Sea, a stammerer, and he holds his stick and drops it on that water. And it's not a parable, it parted heater and teeter. Hear me. Your Bible talks about a man called Noah who did not study architecture, yet he built an ark. It was not a parable. Have you built any structure that can host all the animals in the world? And that, listen, the best of the structures in the world have been victims of tsunamis, have been victims of all kinds of tornadoes and volcanoes. But that which Noah built, no pillar to the ground, standing on water, yet it did not sink. What technology did he deploy? Listen, many of us here are science-based. Prove to me that you can build an ark of gopher wood with a lot of space inside. Are we together? And put all the animals in the wall. That weight must make it sink. Are we together? All the animals in the world. And then the heavens give rain. And the earth also gives rain. And yet it does not capsize. It does not turn around. Come on. There are realms beyond science. 
there are realms beyond physics there are realms that only intimacy can take you there please believers hear me I speak to an intellectual generation I respect your intellect but there are realms and virgin dimensions in the spirit that it takes hunger and a press that men can access power power that science cannot explain there are dimensions of grace I'm telling you there is a generation every generation will not fail I assure you there is a generation that will get it there is a generation that will get it there is a generation that will get it it is a hunger in the heart of God every generation will not miss it I have watched the videos of God's generals by the privilege of God's grace I have heard of the things that they did I have read about the church in Nigeria the mighty men and women who God used and we salute everything they have done but like every generation, we also saw their limitations. I'm telling you, there is a generation that will demonstrate God to the earth, that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Living, walking miracles. Living, walking miracles. Living, walking miracles. There are thrones. There are kingdoms. There are mountains and there are thrones. Only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are kings, there are kings, there are kingdoms. There are mountains and there are this hear me there are many of you beyond level one businessman I know you have learned all the laws of business but can I tell you that there are still demon spirits and they have the power to manipulate those laws so that even in your obedience of them they may not seem to happen this is where this other dimension comes the dimension through intimacy that you can speak with one word and shift the spiritual climate of a territory. I know this because it will happen. I have seen it many times in my visions and I don't know who will avail himself to say, Lord, there has to be a generation that will get it. There has to be a generation that will get it. Hallelujah. Watch this. Here's what Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, is that in your Bible? It says, shall he also do? Then it says, greater works. Hear me. Now, respectfully speaking, I salute all of us together for what we are doing. But when you hear me tell you that we are still, the version of spirituality we are in now is the version of typewriter technologically. There are still levels to enter. It's because of our slow place that is garnished by a lot of pride and arrival mentality. Thank God for the little we have seen. But believe me, I'm not just trying to be humble. I am telling you there are realms that we have not stepped into. Where we access the powers of the age to come. Men who become like God upon the earth. Hallelujah. When was the last time that you saw a flood about to wash a nation and you stood and said, Flood, thus far have you come. No further shall you go. Listen, we have so recycled the little results that we have that we have built a camp of mediocrity around it. No. 
Tonight's message is not for the nominal Christian who is satisfied with falling down and standing up. Tonight's message is not for the nominal Christian who just wants to give one prophecy, one word of knowledge. Tonight's message is not for someone who just wants to give Greek and Hebrew. We are talking of men who become living wonders, conduits of kingdom possibilities. Hallelujah. We brag about seeing angels. We brag about going to the realm of the spirit. We brag about meeting demons. We brag about meeting Jesus. But we cannot see the power that is connected to that intimacy. Because every time people met Jesus in the Bible, they came back with something they could prove. Now, I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to mock or be sarcastic. But I have read books of people who supposedly claim that they met Jesus every day for a long time. The Jesus you read in this Bible, find out those who met him for three and a half years. Look at what he left with them. They turned the world upside down. Whoever met Jesus and went back the same. Tell me one person who met Jesus. And yet we say we have met him. Yet we claim like we are drinking tea every day with him. And after all of that, the corresponding manifestation of power. Now, I have read my Bible. When Paul met him, look what happened to Paul. Paul, a, a hunger was in him that at the zenith of his apostolic ministry, all he could say is that I may know him. Let me meet him one more time. Let him do something to me. How about Peter? How about John? The madman at Gadara, he didn't have a vision of him every day. He met him once and became an evangelist. Can I tell you, we must re-examine the Jesus we have been seeing. Because I'm not trying to be sarcastic. Let me tell you the truth. I have read my Bible. Let God be true and all men liars. I have met Jesus and I know what happened to me. When you meet Jesus, there must be proof that you met him. The glory that emanates from your life, find out what happened when Moses met him for 90 days. Moses did not even know his face was shining. It's when he came down, men said, what is this? They said, what, does it, what kind of glow does it take to use a veil in the afternoon? Ladies and gentlemen, this revival thing we keep talking about, Ba, we're only going to waste our time if we don't mean business. A genuine encounter with the God of the Bible a genuine encounter with the Holy Spirit must leave a, a provable deposit of God within you that you can take back as a gift. Listen, we are ordinary men. There are times that some of these my lovely children come to me and I'm tempted to give them gifts. Sometimes I can bring out 10 naira. This is me, a man. Yet I know the value of seeing how I can respond to them. How much more the God of heaven. And he sat with you and spoke with you Joshua Selman, you saw him, is it true? Where is the proof? And you have the effrontery to say light left him and came to you. Where is the light? Swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know, in his hands are the keys to eternal life. It's a little here, a little there, and then your day will dawn. He's at work in you, changing everything. Hear me. There were men and women in the Bible who manifested certain dimensions of grace. Many of them have died today, but they left their dealings with God. The journey did not start for them by learning laws. It started by a pursuit of God. The prophet could look at the woman. How many of us can speak like Elisha? Madam, what do you want us to do for you? How can a man speak like that? Should I talk to the president for you? Don't ask me how. I know my ways to reach him. 
And she says, no, I live among my people. All of a sudden, the servant comes to say, I notice this woman has no child. And cheaply, this is not experimentation. The prophet looks at her and says, according to the time of life. He never said, call on me and update me with the result. Mm -mm. One statement. These ones are not laws. This is power that comes through intimacy. That someone comes to meet you and says, man of God, this is the last opportunity. There is somebody dying in the hospital. That's not when you should start teaching principles of friendliness or administration and say, you see, the dieting is a very serious thing. That is wonderful only when the person is going to leave. This guy is dying. Let me tell you the kind of men that God is looking for. People who will stand and say, let that sick person come that you will know there is a prophet in Israel. And with one pronunciation, Naaman, no matter how long your leprosy is, it is about to turn. Go and wash in Jordan seven times. Does not make sense, but this is a realm higher than science. And Naaman returns back and is healed. Jesus is strolling around Nain and he's seen a widow who is about to bury her child, haven't buried her husband. And Jesus says, stop, what is going on here? And the woman is crying and he says, drop that coffin down. My goodness, can I tell you, man of God, the day three dead people confirmed medically come back to life in your church, whether it's poster or Facebook, you don't, no matter what it is, it is security that will have to protect you because of the way people will weary you. I respect church growth principles, but there are superior principles. The manifestation of genuine power from heaven. The Bible says where the carcasses are, there the eagles will gather. Can I tell you, there are people who park full stadiums because footballers are about to play football and they pay for it and they smuggle their way through the space and they are happy when something spectacular begins to happen most of the miracles that happen to us are still within the realm of controversy that is the reason why it is not compelling enough did it really happen this wheelchair did the person really stand up this headache did it how are we sure all that, there, there, there are levels called notable miracles, manifestations of the power of God that even the Sanhedrin council can say, this one, we cannot say anything against it. Power from on high. That this woman was barren and suddenly comes with four children. Ah. Then just when you are trying to say some manipulation, a dead body comes back to life. Five blind people Look at how this blindness that was struggling to open people's eyes. Is your eye open? The person said, my eye is not open. No, I'm not seeing. Yet there was a prophet in the Bible who played with blindness and sight in a moment called Elisha. Lord, open his eyes. He opened the servant's eyes. Close the eyes of an army. Their eyes were closed. Take them to Samaria. Open their eyes. Look at, he was playing with it. That, there is a formula. Listen, I'm not just entertaining you. Except you are not a believer. What did this man know? What did this man carry? Today, if one blind eye is open, whether verified or not, we are so excited and thank God for it. But what did the prophet know? What did Elijah know? That he could laugh at the prophets of Baal. If you saw someone come with a charm right now, a confirmed herbalist, you say, Apostle, where are you? Come and stand close to me as we pray because of fear. Yet Elijah was laughing and said, call Baal, maybe. There was a time business was failing. They could not catch any fish. Watch Jesus. If I were the one, I would now start teaching principles of fishing. And there is a place for that, I taught you. Come in the night, put your net, and allow the fish to just play around it. Are we together? Bait them with feed and then you come and drag it and you catch fish. That is the principle of fishing. But watch what Jesus does. He says, little children, have you any catch? And Peter says, we've been struggling. What do you mean by have you any catch? He said, cast your net to the right side. Game over. Cast your net to the right side. It does not matter whether the fish 
What if that grace can come on you as a man of God to speak over your business people? Do you know what can happen to them? You are not endorsing laziness, but that this guy is in debt already. It is not a principle that will bring him out of debt. A family, listen, when the prophet met a woman who was in debt, he did not share principles. Now, don't get me wrong. There are principles that can bring her when she, when she, her debt issue was solved. He now said, go and sell and live with the rest. He now introduced principles. There is a power of God that is invested in buying and selling. But with respect to this tragedy now, you need a higher level of power. Shut your door and begin to pour the oil. Shut your door. Listen, if we do not access this level of power, can I tell you, the devil is going to start using diseases like cancer, HIV, all these satanic diseases and he's going to waste a generation. There are real spirits that are oppressing God's people. There are mysterious occurrences happening to men in business. A man will build a house that he knows he built well. Some wind will just come and the whole house collapses. That is not an architectural problem. That is witchcraft. The solution is not just to add cement. The solution is to understand the mysteries of priesthood that somebody can go and stand there and say in the name of the Lord Jesus O earth hear ye the word of the Lord sit down can I give you the last one and then I will teach you oh dear wherever we stop we'll pray number one the power of God programmed into laws and principles did you get that Number two, the power of God that is accessed through intimacy and the pursuit of God. Number three, the power that is accessed through covenant connections. The third and final dimension of God's power is accessed through covenant connections. What does that mean? That means an individual who has a covenant with God that has allowed for certain manifestations of his power. When you get connected to that person by covenant or by prophetic covering, you can become a partaker and a beneficiary of that dimension of God's power. Even though personally you may not be able to command it in your life, but by reason of that connection. An example for the sake of time, you find that in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 5, then when we go to 13 from verse 1 to 6, it is the story of um, Abraham and Lot. The Bible talks about Abraham, that God called him and he says, and Lot went with him. When we get to chapter 13 from verse 1, when you read down to 6, the Bible says Abraham became rich in cattle, rich in all of this because of his covenant with God. But it says Lot who also went with him with no effort on his part also began to prosper. The moment Lot connected, disconnected from Abraham, he started going down until he found himself in Sodom. Covenant connections. Another example, that should be 2 Kings chapter 6. Give it to us, please. The story of Elisha, 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's start from verse 8. I hope I got that right. 2 Kings 6 and verse 8. The king of Syria warred against Israel. Watch this. And took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And every time the king discussed it, the Bible says, the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass through this place. So the king of Syria kept getting angry, and he called his men and said, There is an insider betraying us here. And they said, No, my lord, not so. It is this prophet called Elisha. He's the one who has been revealing the secret. And he now sent warriors. Are we together now? He sent warriors, and then by night, they encamped all around Elisha. And then by morning, that should be, give us verse um, 16. Give us verse 16. Elisha, the servant, was now afraid. And when they got up, there was an army all around them. And the Bible says, Elisha answered and said to him, Fear, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now we're reading to 23, verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Listen, 
Do you know the level of spiritual sacrifice and investment it takes for your eyes to be open under normal circumstances? And yet a prophet cheaply makes a request to God, not minding whether his servant believed it or not. And the Bible says the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. I hope you know by now Gehazi had become leprous, so he was no longer his servant. He was another one now. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha, 18. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed again to tell you it is not a mistake. He said, smite these people, I pray, with blindness. That's it. And he smote them. Can you imagine? It was as if God was a slave to a man. Smites these people and that's it. A whole army. These men were dangerous people. Imagine Nigerian army, for instance, preparing for war. And suddenly the presidency gets a call that all our military men have become blind. Why? Because somebody sat on the mountain and made a decree. These men were alive on earth. He smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha, 19. And Elisha said to them, this is not the way, neither this is a city. Follow me and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. He led them to Samaria, verse 20. The Bible says it came to pass when they were come into Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of this man. What if their eyes did not open again? He was so sure, open their eyes that they may see and the Lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold they were in the midst of Samaria and the king of Israel said unto Elisha when he saw them my father shall I smite them shall I smite them 22 and he answered thou shalt not smite them wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow he says set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go back to their master 23 and he prepared great provision for them watch this and when they had eaten and drunk he sent them away and they went to their master so the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel there is another way to keep a land safe war is one strategy the other one is through the accurate manifestation of superior prophetic manifestations that a whole army how do you know who will you send to kill such a man when you are blind before you arrive if they send you will you go <laughs> read about elijah resting up the mountain and a band of 50 people come you see how elijah was harsh he did not even command blindness. His own was fire to come on them. Another band came, fire came. The third, when they came, they begged him. They said, it's not, we are not coming on our own. We were instructed. Please come down and follow us. They called him the troublemaker of Israel. This was Jezebel's own testament, testimony. There are men who will turn this world upside down. But hear me, this third level is very powerful because there are possibilities you desire to work in your life but as at yet you may not have ascended that realm in the spirit you can through covenant connection align with men and women who by the grace of God have accessed those realms and you can start partaking of those possibilities even before you come into it experientially this is true there are people who got planted under certain graces, under certain churches, and they began to prosper. And they did not even know so much about prosperity because they came under this third level of the power of God. When God calls men, you see, there are covenants that he has with them. And provided they walk in keeping with the conditions that maintain that covenant, there are graces that are released through those covenants. And the graces are not just for the benefit of the men alone. It says, I and the children children that the Lord has given me is that in your Bible we are for signs not I am for signs we are for signs it started with I but it extended to the children that the Lord had given me then it says we all together the one with the covenant and the one who has come through connection that's why certain times you see us speak in this ministry and sometimes you may think it's arrogance about certain graces that God has put here that if you have an understanding you see people come and stand and testify and just say it and sometimes respectfully speaking very unassuming people and you are wondering how did this thing add up here that is the power of covenant connections 
if Jonah enters your boat, you will go down. Whether you are good or not, you can know all the principles that make you a businessman. Plus Jonah, you are going down. Am I right on that? If Jesus enters your boat, no matter what goes wrong, even if it's only water that is in the boat, with the presence of Jesus, it will not go down. Covenant relationships are powerful. So the Spirit of God told Philip, join this chariot. And he joined the chariot and he met an Ethiopian eunuch who was reading about the Messiah, the prophecy. He was coming from Jerusalem, the place of, of worship. And now he began to explain to him. And when they found water, he said, this is water, can I be baptized? He said, understandest what thou readest. He said, how can I accept some man teach me? Ladies and gentlemen, every time you see the power of God manifesting on earth, it comes across men on these three platforms. Number one, principles and laws. That is not relationship dependent. That is purely a matter of understanding. Are we together? The second dimension that I've taught you is the highest that comes through relationships. This one comes directly from God. When you press into the things of God, there is a deposit of divinity upon you that can be proven here and now. And this is why we press in worship, we press in prayer, are we together? We press in fasting, we press loving Jesus. Because we love him, but we hope to be able to attain unto this state of power in the spirit. And then the third, God has connected us strategically to men and women across the globe to provide that advantage of accessing superior dimensions of God's power, even through covenant connections. Now listen, the last thing I'm going to teach you before we pray is for the power of God to be expressed on earth. Write it down, please. For the power of God to be expressed on earth. One of these five elements must be used. For the power of God to be expressed on earth. That means the power of God can never be expressed and seen in the world of men until his power is in partnership with one or more of these five elements. Put a colon and let me list the elements for you. Every time you see the power of God manifest in the Bible, every time you see the power of God manifest on earth, there must be a participation of these five elements. Number one, light. Light. Number two, sound. Just write. You will never see the manifestation of the power of God on earth except it comes through these conduits. One, light. Two, sound. Three, fire. Four, earth. E-A-R-T-H. Five, water. One, light. Two, sound. Three, fire four f five water please look up these are mysterious elements that god planted in our world you will never see the manifestation of god's power until it comes through one or more of these elements are we together this is very important now watch this god himself calls the word light and speaking about light in John 1 5 he says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not watch this the entire creation from a biological standpoint today survives on light am I right on that in this case the light of the Sun in biology we study about the light and dark reaction remember the process by which plants convert sunlight to chlorophyll remember you were taught in basic biology yes light we draw sunlight and men on earth will die because there will no longer be plants there will no longer be food and it's mysterious that this light you see is older than everybody on earth yet it does not diminish in glory the light of the sun remains fixed never to diminish your cloth will diminish 
Even your own face will diminish under normal circumstances. But this sun has remained constant. This light you see is a mystery. Till today, science cannot define light. They can only describe it using numerical figures. Light is a mystery. It was outsourced from the realm of the spirit. Are we together now? The first thing God released upon the earth was light. Let there be light. Let there be element number one. Number two, sound. Sound. It is because of the presence of sound that words can move and can be heard. Am I right on that? Is that true? As powerful as words are, they are only as powerful as the sound that conveys them. This is very important. When you read Ezekiel chapter 47 for sake of time, you will see there, Ezekiel said, I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You see sound playing a role there. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Bible says they were all gathered in one place. The first thing that happened is suddenly there came a sound. Sound. The supernatural will never find expression until there is the element of sound. Hmm. It's amazing that people can come here sick. People can come here oppressed. And all those spirits are hearing and all the conditions are quiet until sound comes. In the name of Jesus Christ, the man who was seated at Gate Beautiful, his miracle was sound dependent. He was there for many years. But here comes an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, give I unto you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and work. That sound, the Bible says he lifted the man and he leaping stood. You have that down? Number three, fire. <laughs> the power of God manifests itself through the element and the conduit of fire. I wish I had time. I'm so sorry I'm compressing this. This thing that I've taught you can become a one-month lecture. Back to back every day. I can break every one of these facets. But this is just to give us a general appreciation of power. Fire. Remember in Exodus chapter 3. That was the element that God used to draw the attention of Moses. A bush that was burning and yet would not be consumed. Is that in your Bible? Moses fire the element of fire fire till today is still a very mysterious we give it all kinds of definitions can you imagine set fire in this place you can't hold it you can't box it it will burn everything in front of it fire does not fear fire does not run away you can't put it in your pocket what kind of element is that? It is so light, you can set it anywhere. It is not so heavy, yet it will burn anything on earth. In fact, the judgment on earth will happen through fire. Fire is a mysterious element that reduces everything to its unit. Listen carefully. Fire reduces everything to its unit. Everything. Bring your car, as wonderful as it is. Go and throw it into a blast furnace and watch that car become like a piece of paper. Fire is a deep mystery. You watch a beautiful building. Let that building catch fire. The only thing that will be left is just the skeletal structure of that building. Fire. On the day of Pentecost, after the sound, the next thing that came was fire. Fire. It came and sat on their head. And Jesus said, there are two kinds of baptisms that will happen to you. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. You know, as I just mentioned fire, I just saw like, just fire, just. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. The baptism of fire is a different kind of baptism on its own. Like fire in your bones. Listen, 
the supernatural only finds expression when it wants to find especially when God is revealing himself as a warrior and one who is coming in judgment his power is it comes through that conduit of fire number four for sake of time earth hmm. this one is a very mysterious element the earth look at me number one the earth is a universal point of contact that means everybody on earth what joins a point of contact means that I can guarantee that everybody is standing upon the earth the earth is a universal point of contact number two this earth you see all of the food that man eats to live comes from the earth this is a very deep mystery when men die we do not throw them in the air to float we bury them in the earth and after many years if you go back there all you will find is skeleton and sand not skeleton and liver not skeleton and eyes every other thing that is not bones is reduced to dust it says for from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return do you know the meaning of that we depend on the earth literally for our survival because the plants the trees that feed us come from the earth are we together now yes so the prophet will say oh earth hear ye the word of the lord hear ye the word of the lord there is something in the bible called famine that at times of famine even the earth does not produce are we together the earth something happens to the earth something is spoken to the earth that stops it from producing and everybody starts suffering the bible says even because the earth failed money failed and men came in egypt and said buy us this earth you see is a mysterious substance the oil that has caused war across nations the earth agriculture that feeds nations the earth real estate that looks like the ultimate store of value the earth real estate is not the sky real estate is the earth imagine how expensive a piece of earth is some of us have been looking for it all around this city and even though you see it plenty your portion has not yet come to you because there is a mystery that brings you to your portion of the earth do you believe what I'm telling you yes. when you move to America respectfully or you move to um, UK or you move to France you are simply moving from one part of the earth to another you are still in the earth is that true there are possibilities that are locked up within the earth and this is where because of the awareness of what I have told you, there are people who have erroneously moving out of the way the Holy Spirit teach. They've started manipulating things within the earth, you see, because they know that there is a dimension of God's power invested in the earth and that the earth is one of the conduits for the supernatural. Jesus himself, in trying to open the eyes of a blind man, he spat on the ground. Is that true? And he mixed it with clay and put it in his eyes and said, go and wash at a pool called Siloam. Why would Jesus do that? The prophets were eating the food that came from the earth. And they said, ah, there is death in the pot. It came from the earth. Agriculture, we have all kinds of soils. In fact, the Bible even calls us earthen vessels. Earthen vessels that the best of us no matter how well decorated is an earthen vessel are we together now this is very powerful and number five for the sake of our teaching tonight the fifth conduit by which the power of God is transmitted to the saints water I can spend the whole night teaching you on this mysterious entity called water I'm not teaching the worship of these things I'm educating your mind to understand how the supernatural happens this water you see is a very deep mystery Genesis 1 from verse 20 to 22 water is associated with abundance 
Genesis 1 and God said let's read together <laughs> let the waters bring forth abundantly stop let the waters do what so the water is like a woman she can be pregnant and she can give birth to certain things abundance let the water why didn't God say let abundance come after all he said let there be light why would God instruct waters to bring forth abundance in the earth let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life the fowl of the air can you imagine these birds you see where did they come from it's in your Bible 21 <laughs> some of you are wondering why did I come to church today and God created the great whales and every living creature that moved which the waters brought forth abundantly which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every wing fall after its kind and God saw that what the waters produced was good look at me 70% of the earth thereabout is water am I right on that same with the human body no matter how healthy you are be starved of water for a while let everything still be fine in your body you will die isn't it a mystery I want you to take water and look at it in your hands and you will respect God in a new way what is this thing called water now the thing about water that is mysterious is that we found it here every bottle of water you are drinking you are not the first to drink it hmm. water has access to every human body the water you are drinking today <laughs> ah. how in the world the bottle you are using you are the first to use it but the water inside is as a result of evaporation and condensation did they not teach you in agricultural biology and science something called the water circle am I right on that evaporation condensation and the process repeats itself again my question is who else drank it before you listen you go and now ask Apostle John why he said there are three witnesses in heaven the spirit the word are we together and what the father and that all these three agree then when it comes to the earth it says there are three witnesses that means <laughs> no. let, let's let's just let's just forget about that let me just teach you what is my curriculum to teach you this night and then we'll pray the spirit the water and the blood that means there is an information in what you are carrying the Bible calls it a witness when your body is dirty you don't use oil no matter what else you use it takes water mysteriously to cleanse your body watch this no matter what jam you put in water no matter what dirt you put in water the water is not intimidated it can evaporate and leave the death there isn't this mysterious that people who travel outside of space scientists will tell you they survive so long because they recycle every water there water is mysterious it cannot be stained you can never stain water with death you can never stain water with germs no matter what virus you put there you just allow light on that water and it will rise and leave the trouble there this is a mystery that many of you have not studied so you drink water and then your thirst is quenched am I right on that and then after a while you go and use the toilet you ease yourself and everything is gone and all of a sudden you find out that there's a deluge of water coming from the sky again I am telling you you are not the first to drink the water in fact every water in your body is older than you <laughs> it had to be older than you to be formed it had to be older than you to be born just use your mind the church is a place of intelligence are we together wow 
No wonder the devil can sit down and in the villages they will program all kinds of things in water. And all of a sudden, you find out that people's lives become a, all kinds of destructive things because of water. I'm not teaching you to go and idolize water. I'm just showing you that these five elements, they are mysterious elements that science has not even exhausted. Plants depend on it. Men depend on it. Everything on earth depends on water. Take away water from the earth and everything fails. Everything dries. There is something called drought, the absence of water within a predefined geographic area and it causes both men and animals to die. So the Bible says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high in the similitude of water, Isaiah 32 and verse 15, it says, then the the wilderness that is bankrupt of water will be a fruitful field. Is that in your Bible? And a fruitful field will be counted for forest. So the Spirit of God can come in the similitude of water. If I speak over your life and I say in the name of Jesus be blessed, you are hearing it, that's why you can say amen. It is true sound. Are we together now? This is very powerful. When you are about to eat and you say, Father, thank you for this food. That was the combination of light, the combination of the earth, the combination of fire. Am I right on that? The meal on your table, what and what led to it? It's the same elements we are talking about. That's why it nourishes you. What you are eating on your table is light, <laughs> fire, water, Listen, you are my people and I'm teaching you something about the power of God. Huh? I will not go somewhere and go and share that. I'm teaching you because I will still come back again to teach and clear your confusion. But I am telling you, if you ever see the supernatural manifest anywhere in the Bible, these five elements were present. So, I wish we had time, we would have checked all these five elements in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he says, now the earth was void and formless, and the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the, the face of the, the face of the, verse 2. And God said, let there be, you see light there? And there was light. Verse 4 now. And he saw that the light was good and he divided the light from darkness, verse 5. And the light he called day, the darkness he called night. The evening and the morning were the first day, verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. This is God creating now. And let it divide the waters from the waters, verse 7. God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, verse 8. It says, and God called the firmament above heaven. The firmament in the earth, you know, that one he called seas and the rest. Verse 9, we'll find somewhere to pray. He said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place. He's still talking water and dry land. Say earth. Say earth. Are you seeing these elements now? And the dry land appeared and it was so. Verse 10. It says, and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called sea. And God saw that it was good. When you read 11, you can read on and on. And God said, the earth that has now formed, now bring forth vegetation. The grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after it. And you can keep on like that, like that, like that. You keep seeing all of these manifestations. Every time the supernatural comes, it comes through these five conduits. They are mysterious elements. They do not belong to the earth. They were outsourced into the earth. That's why none, none of these five things experience death. Light does not die because it is not mortal. Hmm. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Sound does not die. Is that true? The earth does not die. Fire does not die. Water does not die. All five of these elements 
death has no power over them. If they were earthbound and they were mortal, there would be a way of bringing them to an end. You can't bring light to an end. You can't bring sound to an end. No, you can only stop it from walking within a room. Demon spirits know this. Back again to our herbalist people as we round up. Every time you go to a herbalist, this is the same combination you see. Earth, water, light, then words are spoken. The words is still sound. It's just that unfortunately, this is, is a satanic thing that is done to... to you, are, are we getting the point now? It is not an invention of the herbalist. It is a manipulation of the laws of God. Now, today as believers, it is not necessary to speak to sound, to speak to water. Look at me. It is not necessary to speak to light. I'm not teaching you to do that. All of the powers that were invested in those elements have today been transferred and put in a name. Listen carefully now. Are we together? So the Bible says, Wherefore, God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names. It says that at the name of Jesus, now you will know what every knee must bow. The knee is not the knee of man. The knee is the knee of things. It's in your Bible. Of things in heaven, of things in the earth, of things under the earth. And then it says every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. That means the power that is in the name of Jesus, watch this, the power that God put in water, the power he put in fire, the power he put in light, all of these powers have now, they reside within the office of the Christ. When God gives you the name, he's given you dominion over water, over fire, over elemental forces. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? So you do not need to go and fetch water or fetch fire or fetch all of these things. Now, I know there is a place of prophetic action, communion and water, whatever it is. I am not saying it's intrinsically wrong, but I'm saying as the believer today, understand when you see people use water and all of that, it is not that what they are doing is not correct. It is that there is a superior approach that is given to the believer now. Are we together? That all of that has been invested in the name of Jesus. So I do not need to go and consult with water and say, water, you have abundance. Give it to me. That abundance is in the name of Jesus. What I would have done before to now sit down and say, water, bring me abundance. Fire, bring me abundance. Light, bring me abundance. I can say in the name of Jesus, I speak to my destiny. Open up the power in the earth that makes it to yield will make my destiny yield because it's now been invested in the name of Jesus. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too.
tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.